Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video I'm going to cover using JavaScript in the Sugarcube story format. Now normally when we talk about Twine 2.0 we're actually talking about the Harlow story format normally. It's the default story format. It's what has the Twine script, the parenthetical usage of invoking different macros, assignment macros and sensor macros. However, Twine 2.0 comes with three different, at least as the time of this recording, story formats. There is Harlow, there's also Snowman, and there's a third one, Sugarcube. Now if we want to change story formats, we can do that from the menu here. Underneath Editing Story JavaScript and Edit Story Style Sheet, we see Change Story Formats. And then again, as I mentioned moments ago, Harlow, this top one here, is the default story format. It's usually what we're talking about when we talk about Twine 2.0. However, like I mentioned before, there's also Snowman, and what will be covered in this video, Sugarcube. Notice too there's a link to its documentation. I highly recommend if you plan to use Sugarcube, or at least investigate it, that you definitely go look at the documentation. It's very well covered, and it's a little different in Twine 2.0 than it was in Twine 1.0. The story format's a little bit different and macro usage is just a little bit different, but enough so that I highly recommend looking at the documentation. So, like I said, in this video we're going to look at Sugarcube. So to start, I'm going to play a little story I've put together. That shows you, oh, well, this actually looks like the older version of Twine 1.0. Well, actually, Twine 1.35 and 1.42, and all iterations in between. So, like it says at the top here, Sugarcube looks like an older version of Twine. It tries to match the older style of using and adding macros as much as possible. So it should be possible, if you're trying to port your story over from Twine 1.0 or 1. something to 2.0, it should be possible to move the code over wholesale. However, you might run into a little differences. And again, definitely check out, check out the documentation if you run into problems. Now, to use macros in Sugarcube, it works like it worked in earlier versions of Twine. That is, the pairing of two less than signs and two greater than signs. We can also show the value of some variable in Sugarcube like we would in earlier versions of Twine by invoking the print macro to print some value. And we can also freely add macros in Sugarcube, although it's a little bit different than how it was in earlier versions of Twine. So let me show you the code for that. So again, like I mentioned, to use macros in Sugarcube, it works like it did in earlier versions of Twine. Use two less than signs, two greater than signs. Uh, for instance, to use this assignment macro set to set the variable test var to the value 3. Then again, if we want to show to print some value, we have to use the print macro. And then again, we invoke it using two less than signs and two greater than signs. We can also freely add macros as needed. For example, I have console log example that I'll go over in just a moment. Uh, that I've added as a macro to this story. And then again, I definitely highly recommend going to look at the documentation for Sugarcube if you plan to use it for a project. So console log example was actually something I added to the story's JavaScript. And it looks like this. So in Sugarcube, we can directly add macros using the macros add function, which is a great deal easier than the way it used to be in older versions of Twine, where it was more complicated probably than it needed to be. <clears throat> so for the example here, I'm adding console log example as a new macro name, and it has a handler. And within the handler, I have a try and a catch, which I'll go over in just a second. But the handler is whatever it's supposed to do. So when you invoke console log example, it does something according to its handler. <clears throat> Now I'm using the try and catch here because it's just good form in case something crazy happens in your JavaScript that you don't crash the entire story. So within your macro have a try and a catch. 
There are some great examples, again, within the documentation of SugarCube that I highly recommend people go look at. But in my little example here, I just have the console log C JavaScript <laughs> to print out to the console when it runs. So showing it in action again, it's what we looked at before. And when I pull up the console, we see C JavaScript because it ran that macro when we invoked it during this first start passage. And so there you have it, kind of a quick overview of using JavaScript and SugarCube. It's a very fast overview, I understand, but again, I highly recommend going looking at documentation if you plan on using SugarCube. It's very well documented. Um, if you've used earlier versions of Twine, SugarCube may be your best bet just getting started uh, before moving over to Harlow, which, like I mentioned a couple of times now, uh, uses a very different macro setup. It uses parenthetical expressions instead of the nested tags that uh, SugarCube and older versions of Twine used. Uh, thanks for watching.